you try to sneak away, but you want every opportunity that you on your boxing channel come to you live from our world headquarters in Tampa, Florida. This is Pro Box TV. We don't promote boxers. We promote boxing. Four fights tonight and we get things started with an eight rounder in the welterweight division. He is the oldest of the DB3 and he is accustomed to fighting right here inside the Pro Box TV event center. He is 8-0 Kelvin Davis. Last time he fought here in our world headquarters, he scored a fourth round finish. His opponent, Derek Whitley, is a big fan of Kelvin's brother, Keyshawn, the US Olympian, the bad boy from Springfield, Massachusetts, also comes from a fighting family. Then eight rounds in the lightweight division, Puerto Rican Julio Solis, who just turned 22 on July 6th, fights for the fifth straight time here on Pro Box TV. He's 5-0 here, 8-0 as a professional. He faces Nicaragua's golden boy, ultra-experienced Yesner Talavera, co-main event of the evening, scheduled for six rounds in the light heavyweight division second fight for Naji Lopez since suffering a broken jaw last August he told me he was simply finding his way back in February against Jason Monroy tonight he promises a return to form and then some his opponent 32 year old Chris Brooker who trains along the likes of Jerron Boots Ennis in Philadelphia and our main event of the evening, 10 rounds in the super middleweight division, Guatemala's rapidly rising star, 15-0 Lester Martinez, trained by Bomack. Brian McIntyre, the man who, of course, guides Terrence Crawford. Tonight, Martinez will have Nacho Berestein in his corner. He faces the former Brazilian super middleweight champion, Sao Paulo, Brazil's Lucas Diabreu who is laser focused on getting his arm raised for the first time against an undefeated opponent. Great night of fights we have for you. Hi again, everybody. I'm Mike Goldberg, of course, joined by my powerful partners, the former two-time world champion, the Magic Man, Paulie Malinaji, former world champion, Chris Algieri. Now, a note for you, our main event was to be 15-0 William Foster III against 16-1 Venezuelan Fredemir Macayo. Unfortunately, Macayo fell sick, trying to cut weight. We'll have that fight for you down the road. And Chris Algieri will visit with William Foster later in the show but let's get to what is still Paulie a great main event with Lester Martinez who told us he wants to be the first world champion from Guatemala he is 15 and 0 he is averaging 3.6 rounds per fight well, I'll tell you if he wants to be the first world champion from Guatemala he's certainly showing the style and, and, and the hunger in his style the determination so, so to speak you know he's a big punching guy uh, his knockout record speaks for itself but he's also a guy who chases the knockout looks to get at close range and bang away um, I believe, you know, he can be a very exciting fighter. There's still some things to work on. I think Lucas de Abreu can sort of, uh, t say, maybe take advantage of some of the flaws in Martinez's style, but it could be a really good learning fight for Martinez if he gets through this one, as de Abreu is a crafty veteran. But if Martinez can dispose, dispose of impressively of de Abreu, I think we're looking at a guy to keep on the watch for in Lester Martinez. And, Chris, let's talk about the Brazilian, because it is worthy of note, all three career losses have come to undefeated fighters. And the only time he has been stopped in his professional career was by Diego Pacheco, and you know that fight very well. Yeah, so I've actually <laughs> called two of the three losses of uh, De Abreu's career. I mean, and like the champ, Paul Imanaji said, he, he's a very crafty guy. And he might be the the B-side tonight, so to speak, even though we don't have those here at Pro Box TV, he doesn't feel like one. He's here to get a win. And he was very much in that Diego Pacheco fight, and Pacheco just had a huge win over the weekend. He, I, 
I thought the, the, the stoppage was premature. I thought he should have made it to the end of the fight. And then last time when he fought Blast, he, he handled himself very, very well against an extremely talented young fighter. So I, I would be, I, I would make sure you keep an eye on Lucas De Abreu. And there's some things that he can show Lester Martinez tonight that he may have not have seen in the pros yet. Good infomercial for our philosophy here on Pro Box TV. As Chris just said, 50-50 fights. There's the A side, and then there's the other A side. And they will meet <laughs> in our main event of the evening. We get things started, as promised, with Kelvin Davis returning to Pro Box TV. Kelvin Davis is 8-0. and oh. Five of his wins have come by knockout. Kelvin Knight Knight Davis, the oldest of the DB3. His opponent, Derek Bad Boy Whitley from Springfield, Massachusetts. Tonight, Uncle Brent, his father's older brother, will be in his corner. He also has a connection to Brian McIntyre. So we saw Kelvin Davis before here on Pro Box TV. And Kelvin Davis, they say, well, don't confuse him with Keyshawn. He looked pretty good that night, Paulie. Oh, he sure did. I know. Don't confuse him. I mean, they're related. He confused him <laughs> to a certain degree, right? Also, they both know how to fight. They're both impressive prospects. They're both guys to keep an eye on. Listen, okay, don't confuse him with Keyshawn. Keyshawn, the Olympian, right? Okay, but nonetheless, these are two very good prospects. And Chris, I thought it was cool. Yesterday in the fighter meetings, we start talking to Derek Whitley, and he goes, I didn't know Kelvin was his brother. I'm a huge Keyshawn Davis fan. Yeah, that, that was interesting. But also, with Derek Whitley, I'm like, I know that name. I start looking up. I'm like, are you related to Derek Whitley Sr., obviously? And he goes, yeah, it's my dad. I'm like, man, his father has been around the block for many, many years. Very, very tough fighter. I've seen him fight many, many times. And I had asked him, like, do you have your dad's chin? Because his dad had a granite chin. And he said, yeah, I think so. So I, I think uh, Calvin Davis has, has a test in front of him tonight. Well, we are going to have a good start to our Wednesday night fights. Here on Pro Box TV, we are also just a little over three weeks away from one of the biggest fights in boxing history. We break it down. Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford. Guys, this fight is finally here. Chris Algieri, you guys have been talking so much about this fight, but it's it's on the doorstep. Break down this fight. What do you like about it? I mean, finally here is is you couldn't you couldn't be more correct about that. I, I was very pessimistic about this fight ever happening. Tell you right now, there's no shot that it'll be a war. Absolutely none. These guys are in their 30s. Um, when you when you want to talk about wars, guys got to fight in their 20s. There's that youth excitement they fight with, that ferocity they fight with, and they're still trying to build their reputation and and build uh build a. Um, a legacy in their 20s. I think these guys have a really great legacy. I guess this fight is for the legacy of who the best welterweight of their era is going to be. But nonetheless, um, when you're in your 30s, you're fighting more in a crafty way. I think their their raw dog at competitive, competitiveness is going to make them really step up and, and, and show new things and take chances, uh, which could be to their detriment as well. So I, 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 think, I think we're in for a good fight. I don't think it's going to be, you know, war from the, from the opening bell. But I think we're gonna we're gonna get a lot of competitiveness. But so no well, pick though, no pick. I would go. I'm I'm gonna go with who I always said. I'm gonna go with Errol Spence. I, as crafty as Crawford is, I think the natural size starts to play a big factor in the second half of this fight. I remember months and months ago, Paulie, when we were in those comfortable leather seats doing podcast, we asked Superman Roy Jones Jones about it, and Roy Jones Jr. about it. Roy said, "Okay, when when they actually schedule it, we can talk about it." Now we can talk oh, about it. We can talk about it. They're fighting. They fight for real. <laughs> the camp is almost over. It's almost time to watch this big fight. Is it as big a fight as some are saying since 2015, Mayweather and Pacquiao? Honestly, I, I think it's a better fight because they're both younger. I think their styles match up a lot better than Pacquiao Mayweather did. Um, this is still a huge fight. I mean, if, if they live up to it, it could be an epic fight, like historic, but we got to see what happens on fight night. Well, we're going to start our fight night with Kelvin Davis and Derek Whitley, our tail of the tape for this welterweight matchup. Kelvin Davis back on Pro Box TV. He is five years younger than his opponent, three inches taller. The reach is identical. Little difference in the weigh-ins, but they will fight in the welterweight division. To get us officially underway and to get the first one of the night started, let's get it inside the Pro Box TV boxing ring to Mark Lichtenfeld.
Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout is scheduled for six rounds in the welterweight division. Esta pelea esta pautada a seis asaltos en el peso welter. Your judges for this contest, Los Jueces, Tito Wilgo, Brian Gary, and Braden Jackson. And your referee in charge, El Arbitro, Gene Del Bianco. And will you welcome to the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, Derek Whitley. Derek Whitley. Dad couldn't make it tonight, so his Uncle Brent, as I mentioned, will corner him as Uncle Brent, a high-level wrestler. A three-sport athlete, plays hoops in the ABA. He has only been stopped once in his professional career. And now on his way to the ring, fighting out of the red corner, Kelvin Davis. Kelvin lived up to his moniker of Night Night back in December when he fought here against Jalen Hill. Scored a knockout victory midway through round number four. Looks to move to nine and zero oh tonight in this welterweight fight against Derek Whitley. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, we're scheduled for six rounds in the welterweight division. Esta pelea, esta patada a seis asaltos en el peso welter. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks, en la esquina azul con pantalones negro, pesando 147.6 libras, weighing in at 147.6 pounds, with a record of seven wins, three losses, one draw. Con record siete victorias, tres derrotas y un empate from Springfield, Massachusetts. Please welcome Derek Bad Boy Whitley. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing the white with purple. En la esquina rojo con pantalones blanco y morado. Pesando 141.8 libras, weighing in at 141.8 pounds. He is undefeated with a record of eight wins, no losses, five wins by knockout. El está invicto con record, ocho victorias, cero derrotas, con cinco por la vía del knockout. From Norfolk, Virginia, he is Kelvin Night Night Davis. Please, thank you. Good evening to you both gentlemen. We discussed the rules of the dressing room. It's a six round round fight this evening. Your trunks are okay here, your trunks are okay here. Unless you have any questions, let's touch gloves. Best of luck, let's get to work. Time to get to work. Our first of four matchups here on a Wednesday night. On your boxing channel, Pro Box TV, Kelvin Davis and Derek Whitley. One dock there, one dock there, okay? You may go. Box gentlemen. Here we go. It's time to fight. Southpaw against Southpaw. White trunks with the purple for Norfolk, Virginia's Kelvin Davis. Black and silver trunks for Derek Bad Boy Whitley. Both southpaws and both good-sized welterweights. You know, even Whitley, who's five foot ten with a 74-inch reach, that's that's tall and long for our, a, a welterweight. Chris, top of the show, you talked about his father. His father, Derek, never stopped in over 50 professional fights, 52 to be exact, from 1995 to 2007. His uncle and his father are twins. Not the uncle here tonight. Both utilized the moniker of Double Impact. And he's sporting the 413 representing his hometown.
Davis with that quick double jab. You can always tell guys from, the, from their body language as well, the, uh, the opponents, you know, if they're there to just show up for a check or if they're there to fight. You can see Willie, you know, in, in his stance and his body language. He's, he's kind of, he, you're going to need to convince him he doesn't belong in the ring with Davis. Because right now, you know, he's looking to hold his ground a little bit, looking to sort of, you know, create offense himself and trying to get in there. He's got to watch that head as well. Hey, sir. Hey. Yeah, you, you're right, champ. I, I saw Whitley walking around campus today, and I could tell he, he wasn't walking around like he was an opponent. He's here to, uh, to get the upset. And if he does indeed have his father's chin, he's going to be a tough out. He may, he may be a guy who can't be put out. Round number one. This one's scheduled for six. Stop over a southpaw. Kelvin doing a nice job controlling the center of the ring, walking his man around. He's trying to put Whitley on the ropes, and Whitley's being, being smart, not letting himself get pinned there. Davis with quick hands. And he loves to utilize that left hook right on cue for me. I guess that's one way to get him on the ropes. Yeah, push him, off. push him right off. Yeah, being very physical right now. And, and I was surprised at the weight. Uh, you know, Kelvin came in well under the welterweight limit, much closer to junior welterweight. But it doesn't seem like the strength is going to be a problem. Yeah, from based off that push off, right? Oh, good Ooh. little counter right hit left hand there. Nice shot. That shook Whitley up. And I, and I guess the cut was not existent, Chris. So there's a bonus there, even though he is much lighter. Yeah, that, that overhand left might be an issue. He's landed a couple of them. That first one buzzed. Whitley hit him on, on the behind the ear. Yeah, starting to land more consistently, and I think Davis is starting to see the pattern here, and we're going to start to look for a little bit more. See what kind of a jump there is another one. See, let's see if Whitley's able to make any adjustments for it. You know, that's the thing, though. You see, you don't normally, see, you don't see two southpaws fighting each yep. other a lot. So Whitley might not be used to punches coming from that angle. They're used. To, he's used to orthodox punches. Because yep. he's had no defense for that left hand over the top. Yeah, right. It's not awkward just for right handers to fight southpaws. It's also awkward for southpaws to fight southpaws. Damn southpaws. <laughs> Thank you. In my mouth, please. Hey, listen. Same thing. If somebody out there with that little rhythm, that little bounce, they ain't gonna know what to do. Keep your jab in the face. You gotta keep your range, Joe. You see how he's trying to come over the top? You can take that half a step back and come, come over the top of him. All right, you gotta make sure you keep your hands up and shit because he's ducking his head and just doing anything. You want him to get lucky. Don't give him no fucking confidence. All right? Hey, like, time, so do you. Like back the head. Yeah. But listen, I need you to do what you came here to do. You feel me? Don't sit here and wait on this dude. Please. Use your hands. All right? You got this all day. Let's do this. Calvin Davis has been training alongside Terrence Crawford in Colorado around, Springs. Box. Talked a moment ago about that highly anticipated and long-awaited matchup getting closer and closer each and every day. Round two, Calvin Davis in the white and purple, Derek Whitley in the black and silver. I would imagine that Calvin Davis would be a good sparring partner for Terrence Crawford leading up to the Errol Spence fight. He's a southpaw, he's tall, he's long, he's physical, obviously. Both of these guys, as we talked about on set, have a good family pedigree. Calvin, the oldest of the DB3, younger brother, 24-year-old Olympian. Keyshawn's 8-0 with six knockouts. And their youngest brother, Keon, is 21 years old. Derek Whitley's got uncles, brothers, dad. Everybody seems to be in boxing. His younger brother, Denzel, also utilizes the double All right, impact. Gentlemen, let him go. Great gentlemen. Yeah, Balmack is screaming about the rhythm. He had mentioned that in between the corner, in, in between rounds in the corner, and you see that in Calvin Davis. He's got that little bit of upper body shoulder rhythm, which is hiding his first move, and you can see Whitley is a little bit confused. Yeah, I was just going to say, I see Whitley almost not getting off. He's trying to figure out how to get on the inside of Davis, and he, and he, and he, he stopped punching, essentially. I mean, his body language still shows you that he's trying to fight, but he's, like you said, confused, champ. He's, he's, he doesn't understand how he's going to figure out how to fight. He's reacting to feints, too. Calvin Davis is, is there. There it is, exactly. Right on cue. I like how Calvin is keeping that rhythm on the outside. He's being very physical when they do get close, and he's staying very relaxed. Not wasting any energy. Last time we saw him here on Pro Box TV, Chris, 
he had multiple late opponent changes and he told us yesterday in the fighter meetings that took him a little while to, to find his comfort and then once he got into his groove he was able to finish that fight against Jalen Hill who was 5-0 and at the time in the fourth round. Left hand again, Chandler. There it is. There it is. All right, let's yeah, break, because Willie keeps dipping to his left side which is not going to protect him from that hand. Copy's coming up. And Kelvin Davis watch does up, come watch up, watch up. and he does look once again to land that left hand. I like how Kelvin's not allowing Whitley to relax. On the inside, he's being very physical. He's pushing him, using his forearms. Yeah, keeping him uncomfortable. And when you got tough journeymen, a lot of times it's it's not even just hitting them with big shots. It's just making them feel like they can't win. Yeah. They get the stoppages. And that's the thing. And also, even the guys that you're maybe you're not going to stop, like Whitley loves the line, not the easiest guy to stop. Good body shot. Really good body shot. And down he goes. Four. Five. Start this here, no, it, was a, it was a straight left hand. That was the body shot that made him. You yeah. ready to go, son? Get and that's again, you get Sapo Sapo straight left hand to the liver because it's that right side. Yep. That was a thudding shot. We could hear it at ringside. Couldn't see it from our angle, but we, I heard it. And it was set up perfectly by all the work he did over the top with that left hand previously. Really, he's not going to get help his own cause with that mouthpiece either. That's why you can't have a boiling bite from Models. <laughs> well, maybe it is boiling. You know, sometimes, sometimes, they don't, sometimes they don't. When they don't. You got that there. When they don't fit. Maybe they didn't boil it. Thank you. And we take a look at that straight left hand to the liver here. Calvin Davis, yeah, oh, steps in. And that's and the thing, also, when, when you got the southpaw, it's like southpaw, and southpaw. Also, and also, dude, when it breaks you, when yes. it slides, yeah. ugh, it's it, like, it's almost like a knife cutting through you. It oh. hits that floating yeah. rib and... Watch this like, oh, dude, I'm telling you, that, that strafing shot. People at home are gonna, not going to understand. I'm telling you, you're going to take one of those for me to understand what I'm talking about. It, it, it's it, worse. It, it breaks work you your way in with your hands like this. Work your way into them. You're standing back here. Work your way in. Work your way in with your hands up. You hear me? off your face. You hear me? Take that zone. motherfucker and then give him something. And kick that mouthpiece bitten down on it. Don't wait to make it bite now with your mouthpiece. Get yelled at. Models, man, you went old school there. Yeah, right. Is that even a thing anymore? Uh, I mean, that's a New York thing. It, 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 it is. But you do have to boil and bite if have you, you don't have the good ones. In New York? The one by my house in Brooklyn went out of business. I think they did go out of business. I'm, I'm, I'm showing my age here. Perhaps Derek Whitley got the last mouthpiece from there. Uh, Dick Sporting Goods, that's, that's, that's one that's still currently. There we go. go. Good start, two rounds in, now round number three for 8-0, Kelvin Davis. And he's going body head with that lead jab again. He really came out this round starting hey, hey. a little more aggressive, trying to make something happen, which actually might be his, to his detriment. There's going to be some more openings, especially when you got a guy who's staying as comfortable as Kelvin Davis is on the outside. Nice short shot on the inside. And a good answer by Whitley, showing his aggression. He's trying. Yeah, not, not for lack of trying here. Once he gets inside, he is trying. But he, but Davis really very cracked, even on the inside, taking away the space. And when he creates it, it's Davis who gets off before Whitley. Not for nothing. Those kind of body shots, that the one that dropped Whitley in that last round, those stick with you a couple of rounds. Yeah, yeah. The left hand still landing right, well. And it's it's because of that dip. No he keeps dipping to that left side, where normally he would be safe against a righty. He's not against a southpaw. And that's, and that's a great point, Chris, because I was going to have you and Paulie kind of break down why it is so difficult for a southpaw to face another southpaw. And you just brought up a great point. You used to lean in one way to slip, and you slip against another southpaw and you get hit. Yeah, I mean, it, it's like, like, like the champ said last the first round. It's like, hey, fighting southpaws is hard for southpaws as well. Punches come from different angles. Round number three, our first fight of the night. And a good combination by Whitley. See, this is where Whitley needs to work. He got he got the position. He's got right, go. Kelvin backed up on the ropes. He's got to let his hands go on the inside. Yeah, David's got to be careful. He got, kind of got to hippy hop, almost too relaxed there, and allow Whitley to, to get off those shots. He's got to keep himself st stable. There's that shot again. Nice, beautiful left hand down low. Nice, the, the way he decoyed it, too. He, he kept his eyes on, on, on Whitley's head and then dropped that body shot down low, sort of to, the, to distract make it unreadable. That's a great point, Champ. A lot of people don't realize the eye fake. We look up, shoot down, shoot down, and look up, or look, look down, shoot up. Good battle. Inside fighting answered by Whitley. Final 30 seconds around number three. 
really trying to fight, but he's walking around with his mouth open now, almost looks a little tired. Maybe again, like you said, Chan, that body shot that sticks with you. Oh, that left, those left hands will stick with you too if you keep yeah. pointing those. And that was, that was a good read by Davis right, as, he, as Whitley went to that left side, that his right side to his left hand, he fired right over the top. Yeah, Whitley's got to start trying to get off first here because he's going to wind up getting himself trapped. Hey, 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 Kelvin. And referee Del Bianco's having a hard time staying out of the way tonight as well. Yeah, he got the fighters have run into him a few times already. It's because he's refing the southpaw against southpaw, yeah. Paulie. It's awkward for the ref, too. I think it's awkward for just himself. Because it's zig and zagger. I'm not zagging and zigging. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, it's awkward for everybody but us at uh, the announcement. Yeah, we just tell you what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> Pro Box TV. Your boxing channel. We've got the news. We've got the talk shows. Every other Wednesday, consistently, we bring you great matchups, good fighters in great fights. We also have a little extra addition to the schedule on the 22nd from Uruguay. I'll tell you more about that one as the night continues. As our first fight of the night, Kelvin Davis and Derek Whitley continues. Please, baby. They're going to they're give this to him all day. All day? Come on, let's go. Kelvin Davis competed at the 2019 Olympic trials. Keyshawn, a silver medalist at the 2020 Games in Tokyo. Black and silver for Whitley, white and purple for Davis. You know, the left hand is not just enough to just come as a lead, as Kid Davis showed. He just comes as a counter over the top of the jab, too. Yeah, it was a nice pull. Oh, Ooh. nice little hook there. got Whitley hurt. And you can start to see as Davis has figured out Whitley bit by bit. Whitley's a guy who knows how to hang around, survive, even can make your life miserable if you're not good enough. But Davis, little by little, you can see starting to get the timing on him more and more, figuring him out more and more, just what a prospect would do. And this, the, a guy like Whitley is, uh, you know, uh, basically, the, uh, you can see the, this clever matchmaking here in this fight. And that Whitley's crafty and tough enough to, to, to give Davis some problems, but not good enough to beat him. And at the same time, show, show if Davis is mature and then showing any poise in his development. And you can see how Davis has done that tonight, where over the course of the rounds, he's figured out Whitley more and more and more, and he's starting to close that gap and then land more debilitating shots. You know what I, I see that I really like from, from Davis? He's starting to anticipate the movement because he's seeing Whitley going the same, same direction, same movements. Now we found the right hook a few moments ago, so that, 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 that shows high-level prospects. Yep, exactly. Th thinking his way through this fight and figuring it out. He's taking his time. He knows he has six yes. rounds. And fighters develop in these fights, you know? which is why matchmakers make them. Both from boxing families, as we have set the storyline, fourth round, and a landing from Whitley on the chin of Kelvin Davis. Whitley has gotten off first so rarely that I actually shocked Davis. That's why he landed it. Because <laughs> usually it's Davis getting off first consistently. That hurt him against her. Second knockdown of the fight. much fights left in Whitley at this point. Kelvin thinks it's night-night time. It is all over! Kelvin Davis, once again here on Pro Box TV, finishes opponent in round number four. Yeah, yeah, I just couldn't see my love. He gloved me. If he gloves you, you can get to the end of the round. He gloves you, you can't see. I literally couldn't see. Here's the finish, guys. Uh, yeah, I think it was left hand over the top. Yeah, there you saw him blink his eye. Yeah. And he just crumbled to the canvas there. That left hand over the top, and he said it caught his eye. Yeah, but, yeah the, the fight that was just getting beaten out of him. You could yeah. see the, the consistency was becoming more and more. And then, of course, he never got away from the left hands all night, and it was just become more consistent. Regardless if that hurt his eye or not, he, he, it wobbled his legs, so he was definitely... Yeah, and, and also, it can also be an accumulation of all those yeah. left hands, all the crosses, those are not jabs, you know? Right, yeah. He took yeah. a lot of those left crosses all night. Eventually, those break you down. So you're coming from a taller guy who's dropping like a hammer all night yep. long. Yep. So Kelvin Davis, as a professional, actually moves ahead of his Olympic brother, 
is Keyshawn's 8-0 oh with six knockouts. Now Kelvin is 9-0 oh with six knockouts. He's a pro box flat platformer. You know, they get him more fights more consistently here. You got that right. You got that right. And against a quality opponent, yeah, you know, for Whitley, sure. that was uh, that was a very impressive performance from from Davis. You know, he's got a guy with a lot of experience who was definitely crafty and here to win, and he broke him down the way that you want to see a top top level prospect do it. Paulie, I'm thinking back to the fight we called with Davis and Jalen Hill and. Kelvin did look more relaxed tonight, didn't he? Yeah, and then you know what? He had a guy, guy who was durable, a guy who, you know, had a reputation to be durable, and didn't matter. Figured him out little by little, and then got him out of there. I mean, the story of the fight was this left hand. I mean, he yeah. could not miss. Over the top, to the liver, and he just, once he found that rhythm and, f and found out what movements that Whitley was going to do, he was just anticipating where he was going to be and placing his shots very, very nicely. And there's the last one. This is the finish here. There's another right hand over the top that had Whitley in trouble. There you see the wobble. And like you said, Champ, the fight was just starting to get beaten out of him. That wasn't going to get any better if he got up. Ah, and that's why he, one of the reasons he stayed down. 2-0 and on Pro Box TV. Kelvin Davis set to make it official. Here's Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Gene Del Bianco counts the 10 at two minutes, two seconds of the fourth round. Your winner by knockout, El Ganador por knockout, Kelvin Knight Knight Davis. Two wins, two finishes for Kelvin Davis here on Pro Box TV. And congratulations goes to the victor as he remains un. Beaten. Coming up next, eight rounds in the lightweight division. Julio Solis. Julio Solis just turned 22 years old. He has fought here not once, twice, three, four. This will be the fifth straight fight for Julio Solis here in our Pro Box TV World Headquarters. His opponent tonight is from Nicaragua. He is the golden boy, Yesner Talavera stopped just twice in 14 setbacks and he has fought for regional belts twice in his career that fight is coming up next here on pro box tv good start to our night kelvin davis going to work and getting the victory and a congratulations once again goes to Kelvin Davis. All right, it's not just Wednesday night fights here on Pro Box TV. We give you a little bit of everything. Things like, well, like this. gentlemen for joining us here on top stories all right Paulie what do you make and what do you think about how this fight is going to play out between Inouye and Fulton um you know I, I think it's uh one of the better fights we're going to have this year I, I I see the fight being exciting I see both guys um you know with the ability to engage uh both guys with the ability to you know um dictate in spots but I, I i'm kind of on the same page with maloney i, I don't know that Inouye is beatable right now for anybody in or around that weight class he is just so powerful and so explosive and i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna disagree a little bit with paulie just to take just to take the opposite side because why not now i don't bet on fights george you don't bet on fights but you should probably look at that line just in case because mm. if you if you're feeling that confident it might be a good idea to throw if it you off. loan me so if you give me some money i will bet <laughs> <laughs> yeah. not only do you get the the juice with the boxing you get a little bit of betting tips here on top stories as well that's a beautiful thing all right gentlemen thank you very much for your time we appreciate you here WBO and WBC Super Bantamweight World titles rescheduled for July 25th in Tokyo on Sky Sports. In a way, has a way to always finish his partner pretty much every day. 
Oh, yeah. yeah. We're rhyming about him now, man. But I tell you, <laughs> he's been one of the more exciting fighters in the sport, uh, probably on everybody's top three pound for pound for sure. Uh, a devastating fighter and a fighter to get excited about. And uh, Stephen Fulton is possibly his best opponent to date with respect to Nonito Donaire, who gave him a great fight the first time around. Uh, Fulton is a fresh guy, uh, a champion, and uh, obviously the bigger weight. So some things to think about with this fight. Chris, yeah. you disagreed uh, in our feature. Do you disagree, or are you going to be nice now? Well, I think one of the most overlooked guys <laughs> in the sport today is Stephen Fulton. Right. I mean, if you really look beyond the numbers of his record or the guys that he's fought, it's, I mean, it's a who's who of undefeated guys. I mean, look way back. I mean, he's been fighting tough guys his entire career. It, it's trial by fire all the way through. He's ready for big fights. And listen, he was on his way out of the division. He came back down for this fight, which is a mega fight at the lighter weights. I just hope that people understand how good of a fight and matchup this really is. And it will be worthy of the wait. It is in Tokyo, so in a way we'll have the uh, home court advantage, the home ring advantage, as he looks to continue with the unification of the WBO and WBC Super Bantamweight World Championships as we break them all down for you right here on your boxing channel, Pro Box TV. Up next, as promised, an eight-round matchup in the lightweight division. Born in Puerto Rico, now fighting out of Tampa, Florida. Julio Macho Solis, second straight eight rounder for the 22 year old. His opponent, Yesner Talavera, 28 years old, and is a true veteran of 175 professional rounds. Our tale of the tape. For our second fight here on a Wednesday, the 22-year-old, six years younger than his opponent. His opponent will have Talavera a slight reach advantage. Scheduled for eight in the lightweight division. With the official introductions, Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is scheduled for eight rounds in the lightweight division. Esta pelea portada a ocho asaltos en el peso ligero. Los jueces, your judges for this contest, Jed O'Connor, Tito Wilgo, and Brian Gary. And your referee in charge, El Arbitro, is Emil Lombardi. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the red with white, in la esquina azul con pantalones rojo y blanco, pesando 135.4 libras, weighing in at 135.4 pounds, with a record of 15 wins, 14 losses, one draw with four wins by knockout, con record 15 victorias, 14 derrotas, un empate con cuatro por la vía del knockout, De Managua, Nicaragua, now out of Oakland, California, Jessner Golden Boy Talvera. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing the gray with black and white, in La Esquina Rojo con pantalones gris, negro y blanco. Pesando 134.2 libras. He weighed in at 134.2 pounds. He is undefeated, eight wins, no losses, two, six wins by knockout. El está invicto, con record ocho victorias, zero derrotas, con seis por la vía del knockout. From Cabo Es, Puerto Rico, he is Julio El Macho Salu. Let's go. I mean, we're over the rules in the locker room, all right? I expect a good, clean fight out of both of you. Olympia, okay? Oh. Hey, close sure. attention to my commands, yes, all right? Touch them up, wait for the bell. Can you hey, tell right. that Julio Solis is from Tampa? <laughs> <laughs> Always brings a big crowd when he fights here at Pro Box. You got that right. Well, tell Talavera from Hi. Managua, Nicaragua, we're not going to not mention Mayorga, right? <laughs> if he fights anything like his countrymen. You got that right. Here we go. It's time to fight. 
right. That's twice already. Uh, Talavera tries a right hand over the top of the jab of, of uh, Solis. Gray, black, and white trunks for Julio Solis. The red and white for Yesner Talavera. Come on, work out, work out. Let go, let go. Yeah, let Talavera go. is definitely looking let for go. that right hand over the top. Ooh, nice two, three combination from Solis. Yeah, so Talavera is a veteran, you know, he, he's trying, he's going to try to make the young guy burn his energy. You can see Solis has that youth energy, that youth excitement where, he, where he's going to try to create the action and throw those shots like that, good snappy shots. Try to overwhelm the veteran. Here's that right hand again. But you're going to see Solis respond with energy. Let's see if he's able to cr create openings with some savvy, crafty moves as well. Let's see. So, did you mention the uh, craziest man in the sport? Ricardo Mayoga? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, I did, of course. Yes, I mean, Managua's oh, uh, Nicaragua. I mean, like I said, if, if he's anything like his, his countryman, you know, he's a rough and tough customer. And in our main event of the evening, Lester Martinez, who is 15 and 0, will put his unbeaten record on the line against the Brazilian. The final fight of Mayorga's professional Get him career up, Julio. Ooh, was guys. against Martinez. Get your punches up. These guys are banging. Good catch and shoot there by Talavera, but Solis looking to overwhelm him. Going to the body. And very comfortable moving back. Talavera coming in, ripping some body shots. Solis is willing to oblige, stand in front and go body for body. Keep it clean now. The only oh, good right hands exchange there. The only, the only thing about being a young guy like Solis, you 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 end up setting this kind of pace. You, it's a power pace. You know, he's throwing a lot of power shots, and you're gonna make a guy like Talavera oblige. You know, Talavera is a veteran, but he's not that old. You know what I'm saying? He, he may end up obliging you. End up making end up making this fight tougher on you than you need it to I'm be. Back. Sometimes uh, it's best for the young prospect also work on that craft. You know, Clean. use that jab, use those subtle feints like that. You know, when you start you start to control the pace a little bit and control learn how to control your opponent and put him where you want to put him instead of just trying to bomb him out. And also just separate the skill set. You know, Solis obviously is, is cleaner, like you said, you're more youthful. If he takes a half step back and uses that jab and fainting, yep. it's going to separate the skill set. But he comes out, and you can ah. see why he has the moniker of Macho. Comes out, firing, sits down on his punches, and looks to give our fans a bang for the buck again. in that first round. That is off the break. The nice couple nice shots there by Solis. Right hand over the top and uh, a left hook. Good on, Sol on, on, um, get your on Solis up, there get him up. get over when he threw his right hand and get, get his head off center. That's why they teach you young prospects to get your head off center when you throw that right hand. That's an example right there. Had Solis throwing that right hand without getting his head off center, that right hand from Talavera would have landed. But although Solis missed the right hand, he had his head off center, so he couldn't pay for it. And when he dips that way, he loads up that front hand, that left hook, which Solis has a good one. Claro, claro. Let's go. Talavera, born and raised in Nicaragua, now called Spain home tonight. Box. He calls Pro Box TV World Headquarters home. Round number two, red and white trunks for Yesner Talavera and the macho one, Julio Solis, in the gray, black, and white. Yeah, before I got suited and booted earlier this, this evening, I saw the Solis fans pouring in. Well, the ovation that he he was given when he entered the ring, Chris, made me think back to the Get movie up, Hoosiers. Up. When Hickory goes to play and they say, town closed for the night, <laughs> game on. Well, town closed for the night, Julio's fighting. Yeah, Tampa's here. Tampa's here. <laughs> Gotta be careful going straight back. He's done that a couple of times, and it's allowed uh, Talavera, not so much to land the cleanest shots, but still to make contact, which gives him a little bit of, con of, con of uh, confidence. First fight in a little over a year for Julio Solis.
You always want to make a veteran lose that confidence and lose, make, him, make him lose his ability to think he can win the fight. Basically, take him out of the fight little by little. And when you make little mistakes like that, even though you're winning the fight, you end up making, giving Talavera a reason to hang around, a reason to believe, and a reason to keep trying. And Talavera, Paulie, has fought a very high level of competition in his professional career. In fact, his last 11 no. opponents let go, let go, let go, have let go. a combined record of 218, 11, and 8. I'd say wow. he's fighting good guys. Tonight included. Another Absolutely. happy prospect in front of him. So Lee's 8-0. Won his first six fights by knockout or TKO. It's gone the distance in the last two. Yeah, and all that shows that you're, you're stepping up your, your level of competition. Yes. That's what a prospect does. And this is your chance to now also, you know, we've seen the knockout power when, when it's needed, but also you got to show that craftiness. And here in this fight, he's being, being forced to use some of that skill. Yeah, I, I like what Solis is doing. He's, he's, he's being very comprehensive in his attack. Head, body, he's hitting him in between when they're at the middle distance, which is keeping Talavera really just down to one shot, which is that big overhand right. Yeah, he came out excited. Now he's starting to think his way through the fight. Yeah, I, I think he was trying to blow the guy out early. He saw that he was he was durable enough, so I got to break him down. Oh, good body shots. Three of his finishes in the first, no. one in the second, two in the third. Step so back. much to your point, Chris. Solis likes to come out hot. He's certainly done that here. Under 30 seconds on the clock here in round number two. Nice feint. Good switching it up. Instead of the right hand over the top, he came with the uppercut. Just missed, but good, good attempt. Good combination thrown by Solis. Oh, that's a quick left hook. And then body shots. Got to watch the heads in here. These guys are getting very, very close. Time! Solis doing some good, consistent body work here. It may pay off as the rounds progress against Talavera. We'll see. And Paulie, he's got power in both hands. These rounds are flying by. Yeah. Good, good action-packed fight. Demon, Demon. Siento bien. Lo que necesito es que cuando entra a meter las manos, combina la del cuerpo a la cabeza. Here we see where a lot of the fight is being fought now with Solis pinning Talavera against the ropes. I like the work that he's doing. He's pulling out. He's not getting hit with too much. But like you said, champ, he's, he's breaking the veteran down. With these kind of guys who are durable enough, you got to, it's not just about hitting them with big shots. It's about not allowing them to land either. So they don't think they can win. Let's go. Yeah, a lot of the stuff he's throwing isn't landing Get cleanly, but it's, that's why it's important to go to the body. And Solis has made sure not to neglect that. He's also completely Fox. shutting down Talavera's offense. He's only got that big overhand right, which hasn't landed since the first round. Scheduled for eight, round number three. Mike Goldberg, my powerful partners, the former two-time world champion, the Magic Man, Pauli Malinaji, former world champion, Chris Algieri. Wednesday night fights on Pro Box TV. Again, the eye faint there. He looked down and he tried to come up with that oh, little man. Man. nice right hand to the stomach as well. Cut, well cut, timed. Cut. Brick, brick. He's Brick. changed levels beautifully thus far in this fight. Yeah, good, good punch variation from Solis. Nice level changes up, down, using the eyes, using the upper body rhythm. And you're seeing now from Telemere, he's, he's starting to put himself against the ropes. He's not being forced there like he was in the first round. He has only been stopped twice in 32 bouts, 175 rounds. Ironically, one of those was in his most recent fight. But there was Alavetta went straight back and ended, he ended up paying for it. The double jab used there by Solis to drive Talavera straight back. Let go of the head. Stop, stop, break. Go pull down the head, hold on. Hear me? Hear me? Najee Lopez in our co-main event coming up next. Second fight since suffering a broken jaw last August. Fifth time we have had Julio Solis here on Pro Box TV. And Paulie, it's fun to call a young fighter's bouts consistently because we do see the maturation process right in front of our eyes. Yeah, and then of course the step up and not the level of opposition. Oh, all that and the adjustments he's making. 
I'll tell you, those counter right hands of are tempting. I'll get slower and slower. So until he's slowing down as Julio's youth energy, the body shots, they're starting to take effect little by little. And also notice the body language of Talavera is very different from round number one. He's starting to be broken down little by little. The back, the back. Box. No, 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 no. Let go, let go ahead, come on. Stop. Stop. Pull down the head now, okay? 30 seconds on the clock, round three. Body, body, body just missed over the top. I think that, that actually had an effect. I don't know if Solis saw it. Would be smart of him to go back down to the body here. Yeah, see, the, the speed of Talavera is, is dropped markedly. Yeah, he's almost uh, even second-guessing himself as he throws the shots. And that shot's again there. Oh, good left hook to the liver there. Yep. Sneaky shot. Yep. Don't forget, the big fights are talked about all the time here on Pro Box TV. And we will hear a little bit of these guys' thoughts about Tyson Fury and Francis Ngannou. Still to come, that hook just missed. That left hook, man, that's, that's been the weapon all night for Solis, and he loves that left hook. He is Puerto Rican, so look at this, right hand over the top, and then bang, big left hook as Talavera stands up tall at the wrong range. And also notice how he got Talavera to go straight back, that level change jab to, to the head, stomach, to the head, and continue with the combination right off of that. Tira aquí, tira arriba, pero necesita tirar. Cuando, cuando usted es adentro, sube el medio. Sube medio. Ahí, ahí. Más, más, más. Puedes, tú puedes. Let's go. Take it down. Let's go. Pauli Nagano must have known something. He, he had a little crystal ball with the Gypsy King when he was turning down all that reported money oh, yeah. in the UFC and the PFL. Now he's going to get a lot of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes patience Come on, let go. pays off. Yes. Let's go. Not usually in this sport, but I know. But remember, Ngannou was in the or, ring. Or this career. Remember, Ngannou was in the ring after uh, Fury knocked out what, the billion white. Yes. I mean, this has been in the works for a while. No question. And he is a physical specimen, to say the least. Nope. Round number four, 30 seconds in. Julio Solis, second straight eight rounder, gray, black, white trunks, red and white for Yesner Talavera. Also, when you're giving your heavyweight champion one of the biggest stars in your company, $600,000 purses for main events, you're classified third bag, you know? And uh, yeah. <laughs> gotta say that about Dana White. I mean, it's, 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 it's a mockery to do that. I mean, guys, guys, guys like Ngannou make $20 million a clip in, in, in heavyweight boxing. Let go, let go, let go, uh, guys of that level in heavyweight boxing. So uh, Ngannou at least had a chance to get paid. What he's been deserving, but he only got it once this time. But still, nonetheless, better than nothing. Hey, you know what? I'd rather do it in one than do it in 12. And if he performs, maybe he'll get a rematch. You got that right. Right now, speaking of performing, it's Solis who's driving back Talavera bit by bit. And Talavera, like you said, champ, his body language has changed. Speed on his shots has changed. And he's, uh, he's, he's, less, he's, he's, looking, he's looking less and less enthusiastic about being in the ring with Macho Solis. Well, Solis left him going back to the corner with a left hook to the liver. I, I used to love hitting guys in the body right before the round ended. Yeah, just, Give him something to think about as he's sitting down. <laughs> That'll make no, you wonder if he should no, come out. Break. Talavera's maybe regretting that he came out. I used to love looking around my, my corner shoulder. See, is he getting up? I don't think he's getting up. Oh, good body shot there. And he sneaks in an uppercut as well. I like the way he's getting them in there, too. He kind of feints up top, and then he dips that left hand real low, and then he brings it up, like a, almost like an uppercut to the like, body. Like a shuttle punch. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good combination. Yeah. And Chris, did you notice when Pauly spoke of that octagon stuff that I did exactly like my mother taught me. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. You and me both, brother. You and me both. <laughs> Mutual respect for me and Dana White, you know? Yes, indeed. <laughs> no, but I don't like I see it, man. No, really? <laughs> Talavera just trying to score any way possible, but Solis ducks right under it. Yeah, so Lisa's staying sharp. Even though he's in control, he's beating his man up. He's still being defensively oh. conscious. Beautiful right hand. He heard that ringside. He cracked him. You can see why he's been so durable over the 100 
and 75 rounds, though, because Julio Solis has put it on Not here back. tonight. Get back. Mike, no and this is where that, Wednesday night, and this is where that youth energy comes into play. Yes. Now. You've broken down your opponent. Now you can almost try to run him over. Early on, he gets a crafty guy. Sometimes it's it's dangerous because you crafty guy can walk you into stuff. But as the fight progresses and you break him down, now that youth energy can just run him over. Now you're starting to see that as Talavera is just not able to Get keep up that head. pace. Which round he said was asking? <laughs> yeah. Single, single, single. That's it. Three. Oye, cuando lo lleve, si te le pega, él te va a agarrar, no te va a dejar sí. trabajar. Ya cuando lo lleve y lo tenga ahí, pero bien vivo con ese bolón que está sacando para que lo pase. Está bien, está trabajando bonito. Macho, y cuando ataca el cuerpo, ataca el cuerpo de los el dos, las dos manos. Seguro. Okay. El, el cuerpo las dos. Okay. Esa 45, de esa mano, esta 45, la está cogiendo completa. Cada vez que se mete, la coge completa. And yes, Vámonos. Julio Solis is the cut man for his son. Father, the cut man for 22-year-old Julio Macho Solis, who has looked spectacular. Round number five, scheduled for eight. And if, if that doesn't tell you uh, the fighter knows that his, his opponent is starting to wear out, nothing will. I mean, Solis came out throwing out a double left hook right off the jump uh, to start this round. So he realizes there's another Ooh, nice that one that landed nicely. So he oh. realizes. And the right. He realizes top, uh, Talavera. 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 <laughs> Eventually, that game caught up with me. Talavera is having a harder and harder time to uh, keep up here. Talavera has some chin. He, he got cracked with some big shots, a left hook and a right hand, and two right hands. So these cut off the ring here. It's going to make it a lot more difficult for Talavera. Right now he's allowing him to circle, but he can start cutting him off. Ooh. Oh, big shots. Working all over his opponent. You hear me? Yes, sir. All right, let's go. Fox. One minute into round five. That's a, that's a veteran move, too. You got a guy who's really pouring it on you. Break up the rhythm by calling a blow blow. Talk to the ref, get the, get the action to be broken. Momentum matters. Yeah. Solis could have attacked them there, too. Absolutely. Fox. If the ref doesn't break you and the guy starts talking to the ref, you are allowed to crack them. That's, that's, that's not on you. You must at all times. intelligently defend yourself. Sneaky little uppercut, and then the right into the rib cage of Nicaragua's Talavera. Punches up. Stop! Gessner trying to answer against the ropes, but Julio Solis looks spectacular tonight. Snapping that jab. The left hand is on a lot here for Solis. You know, hooks to the head, hook to the body, jabs. Different rhythm of jabs as at times he's used, that, used it to double it as well. The right hand hasn't been too shabby either. Let me see another attempt right over the top. Right on cue for you there, Chris. And he steps back and he steps right into a left hook. Talavera's just a hard man. I mean, he's, he's, he's getting hit with really clean shots. He's never, never really been buzzed. At least not showing it. And I mean, when he was stopped in March, guys, it was against 10 and 1 Joe Farina. So again, high level opposition for Yesner Talavera. Oh, good overhand right lander for Talavera. First one since round number one. So he came right back with his own hook. They kind of both landed there. Come on. Come on. 20 seconds on the clock, round number five. Get back. Get back. No punch. No punch. Fox. Four-time national, four-time regional, 17-time state champion back in Puerto Rico, 22-year-old Julio Solis, and you can hear that punch land again. Great flurry to end the round. <laughs> some, some guys are just blessed with chins. Tell yeah. <laughs> there's one of those guys. See that action here, you see Solis creating that space of the shoulder to start this whole combination. You know, Oliveira actually tried to fight back, but you know the weight and then the forward momentum of the shots going with uh, Solis. Coming up next, our co-main event of the evening: six and zero, oh, Naji Lopez against a man with 16 wins and six knockouts, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania's Chris Brooker. Our co-main event coming up next. Okay, so hazlo así entonces. Hazlo así entonces. No, pero si usted me dice. 
salir, pueda subir esa mano si él tiene ese bolón que él no tiene más nada. bien? Vamos arriba, caballo. Round number six, red and white for Talavera, gray, black and white for Solis. Big leaping left hook there from Solis. Catches Talavera. Luckily, Talavera was moving in the opposite direction, or that really would have been bad. Brilliant at the basics. Yep, so he's going up and down the gears here nicely in this fight. You know, he's gone up all the way to fifth gear at times. He's, he's, now he's in that control mode where he's using the jab to sort of reoxygenate while he controls the pace, while he controls the distance. And now he's reoxygenated, he's back at it. Man, I love how he gets that body. Throws from the canvas on that left hook. That shovel hook a minute ago. And then the quick jab connects. His commitment to the jab this round has been very nice. I think that's really smart of him. He's got a guy in front of him that these hooks and big shots he's taking, he's absorbing them, but now it's that it's that jab that masks the punch. And it's the, the shot you don't see that hurts you the most. Nice little feint oh, yep. you know, And that feint worked pretty darn well because of what you just talked about, Chris. He's put so many jabs on Talavera in this round. And then there it is again. Good, sharp jab. And they're hard, too. It's not just a, a scoring jab. Like you said, the right hand not bad either, right? Yeah. Ended in start back combination. So Lisa is showing the, the full arsenal tonight. You know, when you step up your, your, your prospect to step him up in level of opposition, you know, you wonder if there's, you know, how much more he can go higher. And right now, you know, you in this step up with a solid veteran, Solis has just absolutely dominated a guy like Talaferro. So he's shown, despite only being in his ninth pro fight, he's already in an eight-rounder, uh, fighting guys with 30 pro, 30 pro fights, solid veterans, and, and, and is dominant. So this is a kid who you can keep on raising his level of opposition and just 22 years old. You know, it, it really shows you how far, how high the possible ceiling is for a prospect like this. Not to mention he's, a, he's, he's, he's got a, a sellable fan base as well, and they yes. love to come see him. Get him up, we'll get him up. Alex D. Oliveira was 20 and 2 March of last year when Solis won by unanimous decision in six rounds. You His last win. opponent, Garcia, Chris, 17 career wins, 15 career wins for Talavera. Yeah, I, I mean, you can really see the pressure that, that Solis is pouring on. It's starting to have an effect on Talavera. Oh, man. I mean, the thud. And you see the way he changes up the shots, right? He's been using that right hand over the top, like sort of in a loopy right. shot there. He used it straight because he saw his man going straight back. Again, it's the subtle adjustments as well when they're needed and, and, and the vision on the spot to select the right shot. Very impressive. Talavera is earning his paycheck tonight. Oye, meme. Por favor, tira a la derecha, no largo, directo. Directo, por favor. Here we're going to see some more of that beautiful work. There we the level change, feints his position in, and, but but Talavera doesn't fire. Yeah. He changes it, he's right in range to hit him. Doesn't really make it make any kind of attempt to put on anything offense, and Solis unloads with both hands. He's so powerful with the body shots that as soon as Solis made that move towards the body, Talavera tightened up to protect the body, and he just froze himself for what was a feint, so he, now he's frozen for, you know, pain for biting on the feint. But good on Solis for building what he did earlier in those rounds. He's able to now use his feints and his boxing skills because he has his man gun shy. Yep. This eight-round lightweight fight continues round number seven. Co-main event scheduled for six with Naji Lopez looking to remain unbeaten. And, and once again, we mentioned it at the top of the show, 15-0, William Foster III was set to face 16-1 Venezuelan Fredemir Macayo in our main event. Unfortunately, Macayo fell ill. We hope to have that matchup for you here on Pro Box TV down the road. And Chris Algieri will visit with William Foster before the end of the night. The punch variation, the ways that 
Solis is able to still find a home for his shots has been very impressive tonight. Yeah, if there's one thing I'd want Solis to work on it going forward is his ability to cut off the ring against the guy, especially a guy moving off to the left. It's, uh, sometimes uh, M M Talaferro hasn't been as able to st start escaping and circle the ring to his left. Uh, you know, Solis eventually gets him when he stops because Talavero can't circle the entire round. But still cutting him off, giving, letting him know he doesn't have that option, even, even from a psychological perspective. See, again, he's able to move over to the left and cut, turn the corner. Came in southpaw there, Paulie. That's one way to go. And big shots again thrown by Solis. And when you have guys like this, once they start stop firing back, you can force a stoppage from the referee. If you just start to unload and they're not able to defend themselves, and we're starting to see that here from Talavera, he's not trying to hit back anymore. No yeah. points, no points. If, if Solis can create a little bit of space, keep him in that mid-range and unload his hands, I wouldn't be surprised if the ref steps in. Yeah, and that's the thing. If he's fighting, not fighting back, or if he's fighting back less and less, it's become more and more of an assault than it does a fight. So you got to start thinking about that as now. Solis, after going uh, for a stint, going south, he's back to right here that's yeah. oh, no. turning turning into, switch again Talavera's turning into a target now and that's that's not what this is you know about the referee's not gonna want to no see punch. that no punch. No under punch. a minute round number seven work punch box guys just box I think if so Lee started with that jab and was more consistent with it I think he, he actually would have Talavera in an even worse position than he is. Oh, beautiful body shot. You can hear those shots. Man. A big shout out to our production crew tonight, and especially the guys in audio, because we are hearing these shots, and they are massive shots. We're hearing them very loudly, and the thud is thunderous. Well, that's why if you are in the Tampa area, you guys should come to the White Sands uh, Arena, because we have great fights. There's not a bad seat in the house here. You get to see high quality action like this. Oh. Oh, box event center here, man. This is the, mm. there's not a bad seat in the house. Of course, Except, actually, be. I was gonna say we're in a bad seat because we're getting blood and sweat on us. Yeah. This is the only bad seat in the house. <laughs> Come on, guys. Hey, you know what happened in the app? For a dollar ninety nine a month ain't bad, you know. Yeah, save, you're, yourself, you're, save yourself the blood. Save, <laughs> save yourself. <laughs> save yourself the, the dry the dry cleaning bill. <laughs> Three with advertisements, mind you. Down at nine if you don't want advertisements. It is Pro Box TV and Boxing Channel. We don't promote boxers, we promote boxing. Subscribe today, $1.99 a month. If you do not want to watch the commercials, I say it's the best $1.99 a month you can spend, Paulie. Yeah, less than a cup of coffee, and you get everything related, boxing, talk shows, news. Dude, a lot less than a cup of coffee, man. Coffee's $5. The now. coffee's going off inflation-wise. Pro Box will still give you a good rate. <laughs> Talavera, tons of credit. Should go towards Nicaragua's golden boy. Put him up for me, please. Still fighting here in the eighth and final round. Another thing that to mention about Talavera, his face isn't even marked up. This, what is this guy made out of? His chin, his body, his skin. I mean, he's been hit with huge shots all night long. Some guys have that. Man. Yeah, I, don't know, I, I don't. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't either, but I don't. have that. I guess they call it a quality. I don't know. Uh, I, I brush my teeth and I get a black eye. I don't know. These, these guys. I remember uh, watching the Meldrick Taylor and Chavez fight, and Meldrick was just assaulting Chavez. There's so many of that fights that I've had. Nothing was on his face, but yeah. one time Meldrick looked like he went through a windmill. Yeah, Meldrick is way ahead winning the fight, and his face was just looked like a blimp. Yeah. Stop, 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 stop. Let go, let go. Come on. Let go. Hold the crap out of him a few times there. Talavera doing now doing the veteran thing and trying to kill the clock as much as he can. Yeah, before this round started, he looked at the tables and kind of gave us a nod, like, all right, I'm, I'm making it out of this fight, guys. <laughs> well, he came in with 175 professional rounds and stopped just twice. Add seven to that now. And he's under two minutes away from adding eight more, 183 rounds and stopped just twice. This is why you give um, you, know, you, you give a guy like Solis this kind of opposition. So, you know, you get him that experience, you get him the rounds, and you see how he's maturing, and you see the level uh, at which he's maturing. Oh, nice shots again. Nice good shot selection here by Oh, beautiful nice body shot. And Julio went the full eight last time. He fought as well, Paulie, yep. and was dominant in doing so. 
you know what I like about this fight? Even though I know they want the stoppage and they're going for very hard for it, he stayed disciplined throughout. He's still he's still very technically sound. His defense has been sharp all night long. I, I like to see that in a, in a young prospect who's able to stay focused throughout and keep the discipline. And also, it, it allows you as a prospect to, to demand to be stepped. A nice right hand there by Solis again. It allows you to be to be the demand to be stepped up. You know, you're dominating your level of opposition. They step you up. You keep dominating. Hey, man, you're you're basically saying I can handle even any even better level of opposition. In less than 10 fights, I mean, we're, we're going to see that 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 infamous or, or, or natural prospect versus prospect fight coming soon for Solis. I mean, with rounds like this in the bank, you got to you got to think he's going to be ready. Go guys, no punch. Let's go. As Goldie said, he's got that win over the 22 guy. Yeah. Right? Yep. It's already a yep. Nice, nice one on the resume. That was March of last year, Pauly, right here. Six round unanimous decision victory. Under 30 seconds. So Lee's again mixing things up nicely. Still trying to. Still but looking for that knockout. But yes, no, right now saying no to a Julio Solis finish. Yeah, but this is a dominant performance for the now 22 year old. Still trying to ruin our suits here. Punching <laughs> like that over the, right over the top of us. Yeah, for the people not in the Florida area, it has been extremely hot and humid down here. So these guys are leaking. And the rain was coming down a second ago, but it was the rain from the boxers. So it was a sweaty rain. But a great performance for 22-year-old Julio Solis, who will up his record to 9-0. This is a two-fisted attack from round number one. Solis showed a lot of class. I mentioned the word comprehensive uh, early on, and, and really that, that's a great way to describe what Solis was able to do tonight. Body shots, head shots, jabs, right hands, overhand right, straight right hands. The body work was incredible. I mean, speaking of incredible, Talavera's chin and, and durability, because he, I mean, he took a beating all night long and never went down, never looked on the verge of stop, again, being stopped. Yeah, and I, and I think that's really the thing I'm most impressed with. There's a lot to be impressed with tonight with Solis, but it's I'm most impressed with not just the body shots, but the way he's able to get weight on those body shots and the way he's able to disguise them as far as setting them up, the way he's able to, you know, it's everything. I, it's something that is one thing that he can really hold on to with his style, and it's going to work at all levels, the way he throws at a body like that. And, of course, you know, we saw a lot more than that tonight. And, uh, again, a prospect where there's a lot to like him. And he's going he's gonna to catch a lot of guys that, and that, that are, are not as tough and as durable as a guy like Talavera, then he's going to hurt them and probably put them down or maybe get them out of there. Spectacular performance. His first fight in just over a year. To make this one official, once again, we get it to Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight hard-hitting rounds, we go to the scorecards. Judges Jed O'Connor, Tito Wilgo, and Brian Gary all score the bout 80 to 72. 80 a 72 for your winner by unanimous decision, El Ganador por decision unanime, Julio El Macho. Shuts out Yesner Talavera and moves to 9 and 0 oh with his fifth straight win here inside our world headquarters. Coming up next, 23 year old Naji Lopez. Naji Lopez broke his jaw August of last year. He's made his way back, and tonight, he told us in the fighter meeting yesterday, tonight he's going to put it all together, and we're going to see a Najee show. Gino taking on Ice, Chris Brooker. Chris Brooker from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Najee Lopez wants to put Brooker in the deep waters. Years ago, Chris, I know you do, Chris, when BJ Penn was training with Todd Marinovich's father, 
if BJ was in the shallow end of a pool and jumped out. Like, I know he's Hawaiian, but he jumped out from the shallow end of a pool right under the concrete. He's Hawaiian, he's not a frog. That was very <laughs> impressive. <laughs> I've, seen, uh, I've seen Chris Crowder do that. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Of course he goes Rangers. <laughs> so you can go home to New York. I'm going to Hawaii, Paul. <laughs> All right, you can let's take start. me with you. All right, you're in. You're in. All right, let's talk about Najee Lopez because it has truly been a journey for Najee Lopez. He's got all the talent in the world. Amateur pedigree is there and then some. But last August, he suffered a broken jaw. His jaw was wired shut. He was on a liquid diet. Now, Najee had always planned on coming down to a different weight class, but not in that style or fashion. But what he did do is he turned it into a positive. He turned it into a lifestyle change. And now he continues to move his way down into what he hopes will be the perfect weight. Eventually, he would like to get to 168 and put on a show this evening. And, and, and Paulie and Chris and... Well, I mean, Najee said in his last fight, his, his comeback fight, if you were, if you will, he was feeling his way through things. You know, it, it was his first time back after a broken jaw. You don't know what's going to happen in live fire. Tonight, he feels like everything is going to come together. Yeah, and I think he had the right opponent in front of him as well. He's a guy, he had a guy who was very tough to stop, a guy yep. who had, you know, Christian been in, Rios. Yeah, yep. been in yep. with, again, against some really good fighters, a, a journeyman, a, a, a crafty, solid durable chin journeyman and, and it allowed Najee to kind of feel his way through the fight and allowed him to get those rounds while still being dominant so tonight I think uh, he can he can rest himself rest assured to himself that he, everything's firing on all cylinders and he can be a little bit more aggressive and in that fight he didn't really have a willing dance partner someone who was trying to engage him but he still showed his pedigree his skill set and the things that he's been working on in the gym that's what impressed me about that win even though it wasn't the, the finish that he wanted he felt he told me and he told all of us in the fighter interviews like it was a good comeback fight but he was very confident when we spoke to him the other day about feeling very differently mentally now as he gets set for our co-main event of the evening so let's see what Chino Najee Lopez has to put on Chris Brooker in tonight's co-main event of the evening there will be a big main event in the heavyweight division forthcoming and it's a guy who made a lot of money in the octagon but he's going to make a lot more in the squared circle and that is francis naganu because he's set to face the gypsy king make of this announcement of Fury versus Ngannou and how this impacts the heavyweight division, how this impacts boxing? Of course he's doing it for the money. It doesn't impact the heavyweight division at all. I, th I think that this shows that boxing is, is a circus. Boxing fans will, will complain about it, but ultimately they'll watch. And of course, MMA fans, you know, they'll, they'll watch any MMA. You know, they're very loyal to, the, to, to whatever sport and to whatever, whatever their guys do. They, if, if they had the UFC spelling bee, the UFC could sell that as a pay-per-view. The MMA, MMA could sell that as a pay-per-view. We, we're talking about the lowest IQ fan base there is. But nonetheless, they do follow in a cult, in a cult style, uh, 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 in a cult style fan base. So they'll watch and they'll support. Listen, it's great for Ngannou. It's great for Fury financially all as well. Um, I get it, but at the same time, as a boxing fan, because that's what I am, I'm a, I'm a boxing fan, and I got to talk about what the fights want, the fights that the fans want, this, this doesn't really do it. This does, really doesn't do it. But of course, Saudi money, baby. Saudi money, baby. Saudi money. So that is forthcoming, and when we see you on Wednesday, July 26th, it will be from the Civic Center in Kissimmee, Florida, Central Florida, and our main event features Mexico's Orlando Gonzalez. He enters with a 13-2-1 record. He will fight 16-1 Romero Ceseni. 
Mohamed Mamoun is back to battle a man from the Bronx. And Blast will fight at home, putting his 8-0 record on the line. Blast's teammate here at Pro Box TV is that man right there, Najee Lopez. Blast and Najee really work together in this lifestyle change. Najee Lopez scheduled for six in the super middleweight division against Philadelphia, Pennsylvania's Chris Brooker. Our tail of the tape for our co-main event of the evening. The 23-year-old is an inch taller than his opponent. Brooker will have a two-inch reach advantage. Lopez unbeaten. Brooker looking to change that here in our co-main event of the evening. And with the official introductions once again, Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, this next bout is scheduled for six rounds in the super middleweight division. Esta pelea esta pautada a Cesar Santos en el peso super mediano. Los Jueces, your judges, Braden Jackson, Jed O'Connor, and Tito Wilgo. Your referee in charge is Gene Del Bianco. All right, ladies and gentlemen, introducing to you first fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black with red, in la esquina azul con pantalone negro y rojo, pesando 169.4 libras, weighing in at 169.4 pounds. His record, 16 wins, 13 losses, with six wins by knockout. Con record, the SSS victorious, Trece derrotas con seis por la vía del knockout. From the great fighting city of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, please welcome Chris Ice Cold Brooker. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing the white, blue, and gold. En la esquina rojo, con pantalones blanco, azul y dorado. Pesando 170.8 libras, weighing in at 170.8 pounds. He is undefeated with a record of six wins, no losses with five wins by knockout. El está invicto, con record seis victorias, cero derrotas, con cinco por la vía del knockout. From Atlanta, Georgia, please welcome Naji Chino. Get your gear ready. It's gonna go off. Gentlemen, good evening to you both. We have a six-round fight this evening. Your trunks are okay. Your trunks are here are okay. We've discussed the rules in the restroom. room. Unless you've got any questions, let's touch gloves. Good Best work. of luck. Let's get to work. Co-main event of the evening, scheduled for six rounds to go. as Najee Lopez continues Good, to make Good. his way back from the injury. Oh, and as we mentioned, unfortunately, the Venezuelan Frenemir Macayo fell not. ill late in the week and go was ahead. not Watch. able, or earlier this week, pardon me, not able to face William Foster III in the previously scheduled main event of the evening. So we've got Najee in the co-main event and our main event coming up next will be the Brazilian Lucas Diabreu and 15 and 0 Lester Martinez. Round number one, here we go. Time to fight. White, blue, gold trunks for Najee Lopez. Ooh. Black and red for Chris Brooker. You know, I've, I've watched Chris Brooker a lot over the years. Oh. He's hurt. That was a right hand behind the ear. I don't know. That might be it. I don't know if his knee went out or whatnot. Six. I don't know. You okay to go? Seven. Eight. Come on, you're getting up. Najee Lopez back up to his old tricks. It is just... all over. Just like that. Stool. What a stool. A stool. That was over before it even started. And Najee. You can see the look on his face. Najee wanted to come out yeah, and Brooker, get a little boxing Brooker in. Brooker had actually landed a decent right hand yeah. on the top of something Najee threw, you know, and I thought, like, he was just trying to get the respect of Najee basically to let him know, hey, you can't just run me over, but then he got run over. Thank you. 
And let's see, let's see how this punch landed. I mean, I believe it was a right hand behind the ear. Good little hook there that partially blocked it. Yeah, the right hand behind the ear. Yeah. Those those shots take your legs a lot of times. It knocks the equilibrium off. Yeah. Left hook was decent, and then bing. Yeah. It also landed with the not the main knuckles either. If you watch how the right hand lands, it doesn't land with the main knuckles. It lands with the the, 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 the bottom knuckles, which you know, yeah. your, your pinky and your, your ring finger. That's not it's not a shot that's gonna supposed to knock somebody out. And look, Najee has good heavy hands, but we're okay? in round one here. Brooklyn's supposed to get up from that. Najee Lopez, that left, and, and he's showing Mark Foray right there. That left caught him right behind the ear, yeah, the and left, then followed up by the right behind yeah, the ear. The left they hit him. The left was, left was partially blocked. I think we got to look at that on the replay. The left was partially blocked. It did land, but then the right hand, you know, followed up. Listen, so it's stoppage. It's impressive. Najee showed good aggression to get the fight started. He obviously convinced Brooker. But even before that, with his aggression, because Najee was very aggressive right from the start, he convinced him that, you know what, I need a way, I need to find a way out of here. I'm gonna get my my brains beat in tonight. Let me find a way out of here early, and then Brooker found it. Let's get the official time of the stoppage here is Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Gene Del Bianco reaches the count of 10 at 48 seconds of the first round. Your winner by knockout, El Ganador por knockout, and still undefeated, Najee. Gina Lopez! Second fastest knockout victory of Naji Lopez's professional career. His professional debut, 29 seconds. The commissioners want to take a look at the replay. Yeah, this is one of those, this is one of those things where you know you start to question. And, and, and yeah, the left hook lands, but it's on not with the knuckles. It's with the smack part of the of the hand. If you watch how the left hook lands, he doesn't get it. He doesn't get it turned over completely. He hits him with the almost a smack part of the hand. And then the right hand doesn't land the left hook main knuckles either. Yeah, the left hook partially blocked. It did hit the side of the chin though, but the the right hook watch the side of the head. Now we're gonna see a better angle. All right. Ooh, man, no, I mean it's a clean shot. It's just like you said, champ. It's it's not with the the strength. And, and obviously the commission is having a look because. This is one of those knockouts where you gotta wonder if you just withhold the guy's purse. We're not trying. But from the replay, it does show exactly where that punch landed, and that is the area of equilibrium disturbance as Najee Lopez makes quick work of Chris Brooker. And Chris Brooker was excited for this matchup. And, and Paulie Najee Lopez was even more excited because Najee has waited so long, so patiently, like we talked about against Christian Rios back in February, just kind of getting back into things. I think he wanted to get deeper into things for the result he got tonight. He didn't want it to happen in 48 seconds. No, I think he wanted to get some more rounds. Also, Chris Brooker sold us that he was uh, excited for the fight. He certainly sure. wasn't showed us excited for the fight. He actually looked for the first way out he found and he, and he finally got it. Um, but for, for unfortunately for Lopez, you know, it's not it's uh, the stoppage he wants. But uh, I think it's also maybe one, a stoppage where he would have liked to get a little bit more resistance, and he expected a bit more resistance from a veteran like Brooker, and he didn't get it. Yeah, but now it just goes. It's on your record. It's another knockout. It's a first round knockout. It's a guy who's fought with everybody and usually goes rounds. So it, it, take it for what it is. For, for Najee Lopez, it's it's look to the next and keep moving. Najee Lopez remains unbeaten in his professional career. Now we've mentioned a couple of times that our main event previously scheduled was 16-1 Fredemil Macayo against 15-0 William Foster III, the silent assassin, unable to enter the ring tonight. His opponent fell ill, but Chris Algieri did talk to the 15-0 fighter. Hello, everybody. Chris Algieri here at Pro Box TV Worldwide Studios. I'm joined by William Foster III, who was supposed to be headlining our show tonight. Unfortunately, his opponent fell ill and was unable to compete tonight. So I wanted to highlight William Foster since he made this trip. He had a good training camp, was ready to work, and unfortunately was not able to. I know, I'm speaking for my whole team, we were all very excited to watch you fight tonight. Uh, we, uh, we've been watching your work, and it was going to be great to highlight you. So uh, just talk to us about you know, what you're feeling right now you know, and what are the next steps. Um, I, feel a little, I feel greatly disappointed because I can get to fight and stuff and show off my uh, skills and everything. I uh, did a great job of uh, show um, of camp of 
uh, everything that was going on and stuff. I had a great, tremendous uh, sparring group. I sparred like over 70 rounds during the month and stuff. I was, I was, I was in tip-top shape. And uh, to get news like this, it's just very disappointing. Like the guy had, I, I believe, um, he had like grade A um, uh, world title uh, people to uh, for his uh, for his um, diets and stuff, scaling his scaling his food like a little. Like I never even heard of that right now like, myself. But uh, yeah, it just it just shows like I tried to put he put tried to do everything he could, but it it. It just It's just a very big disappointment. Like, everything should have been going down smoothly. He didn't even come in the, when uh, he was supposed to be here. Like, when I, I came in on Friday and stuff, I was wondering where my component was at. And he was just, it was just a lot of, like, eh, what's going on in these situations and stuff. But, um, yeah, I just kept my, my mind focused on the weight and stuff. I weighed uh, 131 uh, during the, uh, the unofficial weigh-in, but yeah, I tried to I tried to make sure, so I was going to make it no problem. But so you did your job. Yeah, I did my job. You did your job. You're you're here to perform. But this is this is boxing, right? This is these are things that this happen. Is, this is what happens. You've been out of the ring for a while. You had mentioned during the fighter meetings that you are an avoided guy. You know, you're you're, you're a very high risk, low reward yes, guy, yes, and, and I actually agree. I agree with you. And there's a reason you've been out of the out of the ring for 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 that long. By no issue of your own, which you obviously see you here tonight. Um, we just saw a former opponent of yours, Edwin De, Santo, De Santos, put on a, an amazing performance last weekend, someone that you beat yeah. on Showbox a couple years ago. Yeah. Um, how did you feel watching him perform the way that he did, knowing that you were going to fight the next week and, and chose where you're at? Yeah, it was um, It was very, like, I was very proud of, of Edwin De Santos. Like, he was a real good fighter. I thought that he was a real good fighter when we fought. Um, uh, I would want to fight again uh, 130 if, like, like for a world title or something like that, it would have been like real fun to do. But seeing him perform and, and was active and, and it was just my time to shine right after, it was really like incredible to do. And uh, it was just questionable like how everything just happened after like he won and stuff and my guy got caught, got off and everything and stuff. Mm -hmm. It just it just made like races to my eyes and stuff. But at the end of the day, it's just what boxing is and stuff. And I'm I'm here and I'm ready and I'm just waiting for the next one. That's all. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, your your energy during the the fighter meetings we had this week, you were, you looked ready, you looked primed. Your whole team was all all here. Everyone was excited, and we were excited to call the fight as well. Is there anything on the horizon that you have been hearing, muttering wise? You know, you know, I know you're right here. You're it's it, it's it's tonight was supposed to be the fight, <laughs> yeah. so it's a little early to tell. But is there is there any mutterings going on, or when you could possibly be in the ring again? Um, hopefully very soon, maybe in two weeks, maybe. So I'm just gonna stay ready, just gonna stay make sure that my weight is right and everything nothing has changed and stuff so I'm just waiting for the next phone call and stuff so any any 130s out there don't want to don't want to have some fun with me go on let's go let's have some fun but in that situation I'm just ready and um, I'm just here to just to see the rest of the fights and just give my support if I if I see fit and stuff and that's all I'm here to do today so essentially just staying ready for when when that call comes and uh, you know like I said it, this is this is part of boxing anything you want to say to the people out there the fans the people that are, I'm sure are tuning in to look to see you tonight I know a lot, I know a lot of your fans are really hungry for your for your next fight so anything you want to say to the people out there um this is um, my apologies to everybody that was looking forward to me fighting and stuff it's just the way it is and it's just the game the way it is and all of this and stuff so I appreciate you guys uh, showing your support um, uh, flying out here, if you did, uh, help, having having uh, bought the uh, the app for me and stuff and everything, it's a very good thing, and I'm I appreciate all of your support. Thank you very much. Great to hear, William Pulse the third. Thank you so much. Looking forward to your return to the ring. Thank you. Very humble and very excited young man for possibly two weeks from now. Now, before that fight, we're going to bring you a special edition on July 22nd. That is a Saturday from Uruguay. It is live on Pro Box TV, and it is a new partnership as we continue to build our brand on your boxing channel. Now, Chris, in visiting to the man who was supposed to be featured in our main event, William Foster III, it had been 355 days before he was scheduled to fight this evening. Now, personally, as a guy who's very OCD and loves his prep, if he fights in two weeks, then I got one bio done already. 
And so I'm, I'm ahead of the game, guys. I'm I'm ready to rock and roll. And Paulie knows, like, he's like, Goldie, like, how do you read all that stuff? Yeah, well, you know, I know you're a stickler for uh, the, the little subtleties. That, That's it. So, you know. Uh, and the numbers. And, <laughs> with the, yeah. with the numbers. Yeah, okay, yeah, yes, the numbers. As in, did I say 355 days? That would be 11 months, 20 days. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, those numbers. Yeah. Well, hopefully, uh, Foster gets a chance to fight soon. A very good prospect. Uh, and like, like the champ Chris had highlighted, you know, had a, a very good win over De Los Santos, who just beat Joseph Adorno last week. And that, Adorno was a guy I rated, you know, a guy I still rate, you know. But so, and, and Foster has a win over De Los Santos, you know. So he's a guy who, he, it's, it's sort of disappointing that he, he's floated under the radar because he's very, very talented with a lot of upside. And um, you know, he's the kind of guy you want to see fight and you want to see him ply his craft because he's very, very capable and can beat some good fighters as he's already proven in his career. And that fight was in Orlando, so why not the Civic Center in Kissimmee, Florida for Foster? Something tells me our leader, Gary Jonas, will have something for him very soon. But that means that tonight's main event of the evening is in the super middleweight division. It is scheduled for 10 rounds, and it features 15 and 0. Lester Martinez and 14 and 3 Brazilian Lucas Diabreu, who is back here on Pro Box TV for the second straight time. Our tale of the tape for this, our main event of the evening. Guatemala's Martinez, 27 year old. The Brazilian is three years his elder. And Diabreu will have a four inch reach advantage our main event of the evening and it features unbeaten lester martinez 15 wins 13 of those by knockout he has averaged 3.6 rounds per fight with the official introductions once again mark lichtenfeld all right, ladies and gentlemen, our main event fighters are coming into the ring. We are scheduled for 10 rounds in the super middleweight division. This is our main event of the evening. Esta en el evento principal, Palea Potada Diaz Asaltos en el peso super mediano. This bout is brought to you in association with Joe DeGuardia's Star Boxing. Your judges for this contest. Los Jueces, Brian Gary, Braden Jackson, and Jed O'Connor. And your referee in charge is Emil Lombardi. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks, in La Esquina Azul con pantalones negro, pesando 166.6 libras, weighing in at 166.6 pounds, with a record of 14 wins, three losses, 11 wins by knockout, con record 14 victorias, tres derrotas, con 11 por la vía del knockout, de Sao Paulo, Brazil, please welcome Lucas de Abreu. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing the white with red, blue, and yellow. In la esquina, a rojo con pantalones, blanco, rojo, azul, y camarillo. Pesando 165.6 libras. Weighing in at 165.6 pounds. He is undefeated with a record of 15 wins, no losses, 13 big wins by knockout. El esta invicto, con record 15 victorias, cero derrotas, con 13 por la vía del knockout de Guatemala City, Guatemala. He is Lester Martinez. Go fighters. All right, guys, we went over the rules in the locker room, all right? Expect a good, clean fight out of both of you. Pay close attention to my commands and protect yourself at all times. Touch them up, wait for the bell. All right? Main event scheduled for 10 rounds. Lester Martinez, his professional debut in 2019, oh, once it was against Ricardo Mayarga, and that was the last nice. fight of that man's career. Guatemala's Martinez. White, red, 
blue and yellow trunks. The black trunks sported by the Brazilian out of Sao Paulo, Lucas Diabreu. Right away, Diabreu coming out with that long jab. He's got a height and reach advantage. He's getting right to work early on. Smart move from him. And, he's, and, and, and Martinez, one of those guys, if he gets inside, he can do some damage, but he's also one of those guys who doesn't really punch until he gets inside. So he doesn't, I, I noticed in the video, he's explosive, he's fun to watch, but he doesn't punch his way in. He wants to get in, then punch. And so against a guy with a good jab, it could cause some challenges. And there, Breu is one of those guys who has a good jab. Martinez looks strong. He just landed two stiff jabs that popped the head back of De Abreu. Also, De Abreu fought blast. Uh, I'm not saying. I mean, what, what way was that? 154? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So this two-way class is above what we last saw him. Yeah, I mean, Martinez looks much bigger. He's thicker. Looks very strong. That one was a six-round unanimous decision win for Blast back in February. Stiff, hard jab to the body from Martinez. You can legit, you legit know Martinez can punch. That's one of the uh, big attributes that he's coming here to the ring with. Yeah, he looks very strong. Oh, you can see the way over the hurt top. intentions. And, and, and Abreu, like I said, I called the fight where he fought Diego Pacheco, who's a very, very talented power puncher, and, and he went almost the distance with him. He got stopped with like a bit, I believe six seconds left in the bout, and was very much in that fight early on. Yeah, the, the official stop was at 2.21, and, and like you said, Chris, and you said to him, they, they should have let it go the distance. Yeah, he was boxing well that night. He started to get hit, you know, more and more in that last round, but I, don't know, I, thought, I thought the stoppage was a little bit quick. And, and that fight against Blast Paul, was a little bit heavier. Diabreo came in at 163 and a half, blast at 162 and three quarter. Okay, okay, so not too much bigger. So not as much, yeah. But, the, but Martinez, you can see the power on, and, and the intent on his shots, as opposed to Diabreo being more crafty, trying to get that shot selection and trying not to be in the range of the power puncher, Martinez. But again, you can see the flaw of Martinez. He, he has a jab there, but he doesn't really punch his way in. He tries to get in range, then punch. All right, watch your heads. And, and Diabreo is doing a good job of picking his spots. He's finding little holes in the defense. When you have that peekaboo style and it's not active, you know, with the hand hand defense, there are holes there, and Diabreo is, is finding those early on. It's a, it's, it's a good opponent there for Martinez to work on this, you know, as, as De Abreu is a little smaller than him, but at the same time, he's a jabber and, and, and he's a crafty guy, and, and these are the kind of guys Martinez may see on the uh, when he gets to a higher level, and these are the kind of things that Martinez has to work on. So this is the kind of opponent that I guess you want to you want to see Martinez with. Where, uh, we can work on this, but the guy's naturally smaller. Yeah, that's, that's a good point, Champ. And also, like De Abreu, he's got 11 KOs in 14 fights, but he's not really a puncher. And they're not letting Claudio Mostad up okay. in, the, in the corner. The best the bucket. How you feel? Uh, yeah, they're Abreu's corner. I think he's having trouble getting in and out of the ring. Well, Claudio, 80 years old, suffered a brain aneurysm recently, but he looks good. We're glad he is with us, and he is right next to his fighter, but not making his way up the steps. Oh, they told him he needs the rubber gloves in order to go in the corner. Okay, the corner without the rubber gloves on. He has been with Lucas Diabreo for the past year as we get set for round number two. And as we're setting up for this main event, I didn't say it in round number one, so round number two, I, I can still do it, right, Chris? Here we go. It's time to fight. It's never too late to do that. There you go. Thank you, my friend. Good catch and shoot there by Martinez on the inside. My powerful partners, Mike Goldberg. The former two-time world champion, the Magic Man, Paulie Malinaji, former world champion, Chris Algieri. Glad to be with you for our main event of the evening on a Wednesday night on your boxing channel. Nice little push-off there for the shoulder from De Abreu, showing, showing uh, what we've been talking about. He is a crafty guy. And De Abreu's three losses, one we talked about, the late stoppage that Pacheco earned against him, have been against unbeaten fighters. So he's got some skills as well. Yeah, you see that the difference in firepower is a very apparent here in round number two. Lester Martinez, a gold medalist 
at the 2018 Central American and Caribbean Games, the first boxer from Guatemala to achieve that significant milestone in 68 years. Wants to be the first world champion from his home country of Guatemala. Mm. Sneaky little body shot from Diabreo. Good inside work there from Martinez. Nice short little uppercuts with both hands. Martinez has worked with Bo Mack, Brian McIntyre. And he's got the Hall of Famer with him oh. tonight. Oh, and big shots from Martinez. Sorry, Diabreo. Good chair on him, man. I mean, he threw a combination there from the power puncher. Still, and, and still staying right in front, willing, willing to engage is De Abreu. And you see the danger Martinez poses at close range. He's explosive, his speed comes out, uh, puts those punches together nicely. Again, it's from the outside that I'd like to see a little bit more work. You can see De Abreu takes advantage on the outside. But when he gets close, again, big shots there. De Abreu is a little bit lackluster on the out. Uh, takes a bit of takes some pictures, as we call it, when he's when he's uh, after he's done punching instead of being alert to the defense. And Martinez has been able to take advantage. He tried an uppercut there as well after after De Abreu punches. You know, and although Martinez is having a lot of success landing some big power punches, he is getting hit quite a bit as he's trying to traverse that middle distance. A little lackadaisical on his own defense, as, he, as you said, Champ, from the, from the open. He's kind of a guy who plods forward, gets into punching range, and then fires. Yeah. Just heavy-handed Lester Martinez. Body head. One of my first coaches used to call that the critical distance line, which is the, the point at which you can hit your opponent and they can hit you. Ah! Martinez doesn't doesn't get over that with yeah. the explosion that he has with his punches. Yeah, once he's over it, he's dangerous, but but yet he's got to work on deceptively getting over it against better fighters. And that, their brave was the kind of opponent that you can work on it with. He's not a big puncher. There you see what happens when when uh, Martinez does get over. I mean, nice combination and a good solid chin shown by De Abreu too, as he took a few good clean shots. That there. was five hard power yep. shots at middle distance range. De Abreu, like you said, has some chin and was still willing to stand in front and engage and actually had a pretty decent round. He landed some good shots himself. There is 80 year old Claudio Mostrada. I'll start there. Born in Italy, raised in Brazil. There Let's you go. go. Take it out. I would consider that the best of both worlds, just hey. considering who I married. It's home for both of us, yeah, right? You know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Round number three of our main event of the evening. Martinez, white, red, blue, yellow, black trunks for Diabreu who traveled the world with the Brazilian national team, 120 amateur fights. Martinez presently holds the WBO Latino super middleweight title. There are moments, though, you know, you can see the crafty punches there, shot selection of, of, of Debra, but there are moments where he's going to have to put some weight behind those shots, put some extra snap behind those shots. It's almost like he's pushing some of them out. He's trying to be safe, but he's going to have to put some extra mustard on some of these shots, especially that Martinez locks up defensively anyway when you throw at him. You might as well take a chance here and there. But otherwise, you know, you're going to have Martinez firing right back because nothing's intimidating him. Martinez is managed by International Boxing Hall of Fame referee Richard Steele. Teammate of Ken Norton in the Marine Corps. 147 world title fights officiated by Richard Steele. Martinez starting to pick up the accuracy here. Landing a lot of big shots here in round number three. Ooh. Yeah, and the fight getting at closer range more and more. And again, uh, their burial for as crafty as he is, he's not very alert when he's done punching. Doesn't do a good job of getting off center after he's done punching. And that's why uh, Martinez is able to make a pay after after uh, he finishes punching. He's getting shellacked on the inside here. Martinez is too strong. And De Abreu has no defense for those hooks upstairs at that middle distance range. Oof. Good counter by Martinez. Yeah. 
Still a minute on the clock here in round number three. Martinez in his professional career has averaged 3.6 rounds per fight. Martinez is one of those guys, like he's he's actually so easy to hit. You fall in love with standing there and like you, you mentioned, you know, admiring your work and then he comes back with shots like that. Ooh, and, and that shot makes him take a knee there. Four, five, six, seven, Hey, you okay? Yeah, there's Look been a lot of huh? punishment upstairs. I'm in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like, I don't like knockdowns like that. You can see like an in-and-out fighter yeah, will get hurt. Martinez problems. The problem is that Barry was in, gets in, he doesn't get out in time. Yeah, Diabreo's like shaking. Diabreo coming off that heavy punch that put him down for an eight count. I think this is about over. Diabreo's legs do not look good. Yeah, and, and, and he, he really needs them. And he doesn't have a fast enough legs to begin with, even from round one. I mean, he was getting in, but he wasn't getting out in time. And again, taking some shots. And, and there he goes again. That was a right hand that came over the top, Four, right to the jaw five, of the Brazilian. Six, seven, eight. Look at me. You okay? You okay? Yeah. You okay? Come here. Walk towards me. Walk towards me. Yeah. Okay. It will go on, but for how long? Those delayed reaction shots upstairs, those those are scary. That uh, they, they, The corner should really be looking at their man here because... Nothing, nothing good happens after that. You know, it was a good stiff jab in this overhand right, right in the temple. And here you see De Abreu willingly takes a knee, looking at his man. He, he, he's, his eyes are working, it's his body's not responding. And Martinez turns that right hand over perfectly, Paul. Yeah, and those overhand rights have been land, getting, landing consistently. De Abreu is a guy who stands straight up. And again, a guy who's a power Let's puncher. Go. Let's you know, go. Take it down. He's a power puncher like Martinez. Let's go. You know, and it, it's not just been a single shot. He's been getting hit with a lot of head shots. Where's the power shots. The combination of few rounds. Yeah. yeah. Let's we'll catch up to you eventually. Box. Eventually might be now. Our main event continues. Round number four. Martinez 15 and 0 with 13 finishes. Trying to change that and go to 16 and 14. And like you said, Chan, that, there's not enough mustard on these shots to get any respect from Martinez, who's just walking him down and throwing bombs. That time with the left hook, guys. Yeah, and and their player doesn't get his head off center. He too, stays too much in the center. As bad as he is, doesn't get his head off center, doesn't change the distance when he's done punching. So Martinez hits him with the return after their player was done punching. Heavy-handed, trying to finish it right here, right now. He's a seek and destroy fighter, but and he's he just hit. <laughs> but he's just flawed enough yeah. to where you know you gotta be. You, if you put him up with another flat-footed guy who's willing to fight, he's gonna make fun fights. But if you put him in with a guy with quick legs, yeah, oh yeah. You, you risk him losing every single round. So you gotta match him correctly. But this guy could be fun to watch. Hey, put him in with Mugia. I wouldn't mind saying oh, that. Oh Lord. Yeah, we see the, the, the end. I mean, this is this is a foregone conclusion. You know, the last round with those those two knockdowns. They were really they were taking. Uh, Debray was taking a knee. He, he was deciding to yeah, go down because yeah. of the damage he was taking you know it was it was a it was just a matter of time and mind you this is you know after he took four or five kids uh, in a combination in a combination a few rounds ago when he was still fresh yeah. once it once the freshness went away he was like man i, I can't the yeah. take these shots even one at a time yeah he, he made a conscious decision not to take any more of those shots which was probably smart and coming into this fight as we mentioned earlier guys he had been stopped just once in 17 bouts and that was by Diego Pacheco with nine seconds left in the eighth and final round. Okay, he was an absolute beast. Had he, had he, and what weight was that fight at? Had he fought, had he fought that? Oh, he fought, he, he fought so at he, this weight. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe this is not the way for him. Maybe he should fight a little bit less. I mean, he, he definitely looked fighter. undersized tonight. Yeah, not, not, fight, not fight less. Fight less, less weight, lesser weight. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll tell you what. Credit goes to this man. Moved up to the main event spot and took full advantage of it. Lester Martinez now 16-0, 14 wins by knockout. Man, he just got some heavy hands and great placement. I mean, De Abreu was landing some good shots on the way in. Like, like uh, the champion manager had said that Martinez tends to just walk forward and, and not punch his way in. But once he got to his range and was able to unload with power shots, I mean, he could not miss. The right, the right hooks, left hooks were landing in succession and in combination. You don't see a lot of guys land power.
power punches in combination the way that Martinez was. And De Abreu in that third round, you could see it was a little bit delayed reaction, takes a knee. And then in the fourth round, it was just another all-out assault upstairs from Martinez. And this fight was stopped, I believe, just at the right time. We didn't need to see any more of this. I mean, those combinations to the head were very, very heavy. And uh, De Abreu just did not have enough power to keep Martinez off him. To make it official, Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Emma Lombardi stops his contest at 33 seconds of the fourth round. Your winner by technical knockout, El Ganador por Knockout Tecnico, Lester Martinez. 34 seconds into round number four. Lester Martinez victorious in our main event of the evening. He is for real. Everything targeted perfectly, everything placed on his opponent, the Brazilian, and he stops him very early, especially considering how durable Diabreo had proved to be coming in to tonight. Mike Goldberg and the Magic Man, Paul Montanaji, former two-time world champion, former world champion Chris Algieri, my powerful partners. Great to be with you again on a Wednesday night. And I'll tell you what, we, we saw Kelvin Davis improve here on Pro Box TV. Julio Solis looked better than ever here on Pro Box TV. And then two finishes in the co-main in the main event. But let's start from the beginning. Let's go to Kelvin Davis and the performance he had against Derek Whitley. Yeah, stepping up in class, uh, level of opposition, and uh, continuing to look dominant even at this level. Like I said about even in the Solis fight, right? When you get stepped up in level of opposition and you keep dominating the way you were dominating the previous level of opposition, it shows the level you're truly at you, where we don't know yet. You know, you, we got to keep raising your level of opposition to see where your ceiling is and sometimes guys keep dominating until they get to a world-class level and then and, and then you realize okay these are world-class guys the only guys that are going to test them are world-class fighters and and so that's what i love to see when when i love to, i love to see opponents who consistently uh, uh prospects who consistently raise their level of opposition and continue to dominate because that makes you look forward to watching them against the elite of the world and at that level it's not just who you beat or if you're going to beat the guy i mean listen we had to assume that he was going to beat Derek whitley but uh but the way he did it yeah he was able to break him down down. He had someone in front of him who wanted to win and was still able to Dominance. outclass him and show his show his pedigree and get the stoppage. I mean, and he did it looking very, very relaxed. So I, I thought that was, a, that was an excellent performance from Kelvin Davis. So Kelvin Davis looked outstanding. And the maturation process of Julio Solis is just a beautiful thing to watch. Fifth straight fight here on Pro Box TV. He was very relaxed. He was, his accuracy was pinpoint this evening. And, and honestly, Chris, it was just a fun performance to watch. Yeah, I don't know if I would say it was relaxed. I mean, he was putting on a ton of pressure on, on Tavad. Uh, he was uh, relaxed me, inside, though, yeah. Yeah, but no, I mean, he was disciplined throughout. He yes. from, from, from beginning of the first round to the eighth round, he was looking for the stoppage. He wanted it, but it, you could tell he wasn't getting frustrated. Even though he was beating his man down, it looked like he was going to get the stoppage at times, but Talavera, just one of those guys, just a serious, serious chin, wasn't going to go anywhere, very, very tough guy, but so at least just did his job, man. He, 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 it was a, it was a workmanlike performance from a very, very talented young prospect. And very very popular here being the Tampa kid and definitely entertained the fans here at our Pro Box TV world headquarters. Najee Lopez told us tonight he was going to put it all together. Paulie, he didn't think it was going to be in 48 seconds. No, no, I, I think he expected to get some rounds from Brooker, <laughs> uh, a veteran of almost 30 fights. Um, dude, honestly, I, I don't know what to say about Brooker. I mean, those shots are not knocking a guy out. I'm sorry. I mean, they, they can get your attention. They can make you realize, okay, this is going to be a tough fight. And maybe when you got 13 losses, what's 14 why am I going to take a beating say let me get out of this fight because this guy is going to beat my brains in time you could see the intent on Lopez from the start he, okay, he was fighting at that closer range he was closing that range putting those shots together putting those combinations together and I, I think Broker was like dude this is going to be a, a really intense fight and I don't want it right now and I or, found a way out. or as one of those guys where you look at a guy like Chris Brooker who's you know he's got 13 losses he's been with really tough guys he's been stopped before us. how much how healthy yeah. are, is what's going on upstairs you know those kind of shots listen once the chin goes, 
sometimes, you know, it's, it's overnight. It could be that kind of situation, or it could be like Paulie said. He, he knew it was coming down, down the pike and uh, chose to end it early. Well, and also in Lucas Diabreo, a, a durable guy. He had only been finished once by a world champion, and he gets finished quickly here tonight by Lester Martinez, who averages 3.6 rounds per fight, and that's just about what he put on tonight, Chris. Yeah, just, just a little bit over it. He, yeah. he did actually make it into the fourth. Not very far into the fourth, but yeah, I mean, I, it was <laughs> it was impressive, and it was fun. You know, it was a fun fight. Like, like, like Paulie, you had said earlier, this this kind of guy, like, as he steps up, it's going to be really fun, because he's he is there to be hit, and yeah, he, he's definitely has good power. He's explosive. Um, he's got a good look to him. He's got a good style to him. I think we're going to see a lot more of this kid at, at high level. Yeah, and, and I like what you said, man. I, I, when you mentioned Mungia, I'm like, yo, dude, this is, that, that is just, that is a world-class guy, but a flawed world-class yes. guy. So just a guy who's flawed in the similar style that Lester Martinez is flawed in. Dude, that, that is, that has got a dynamite fight. And listen, Mungia's a guy who makes great fights all the time. Listen, yep. the Revinchenko fight was fun uh, recently with Mungia. Uh, he makes for fun fights, and I think Lester Martinez is not that far off from a fight with Jaime Munguia. Listen, if I thought Jaime Munguia was going to fight him tomorrow, and maybe some people would be disappointed because they wouldn't know who Lester Martinez is. But as, as people grow to see Lester Martinez, I think he's going to be a fun guy to match against guys like this. You can build that fight up. Or even Edgar Berlanga. I wouldn't mind yeah. seeing that match. That's well, a good matchup. Not, not bad at all. That's not, not a bad, bad matchup either. Yeah, that, dude, that is, that's legit 50-50, man, because Mar Martinez is a guy with a lot behind him, and he's a dangerous guy in some ways, and Berlanga's dangerous in other ways. Both have a good knockout ratio. Dude, I like that. I like what you're thinking, Chandler. I'm a matchmaker like you're thinking. now. <laughs> but the greatest compliment that you have just given Lester Martinez are the two guys who you said might be a good matchup for him. That is high yeah. praise for yeah. Lester Martinez. Don't forget, two weeks from tonight, we will be in Central Florida. Orlando Gonzalez against the Demon, Ramiro Cicena. And that is our main event. Muhammad Mamoon is back to battle the 12-0 Steve Galliano from the Bronx and blast. Daryl Val Saint puts his 8-0 record on the line. That is Wednesday, July 26th. Then in August, we are right back here in our world headquarters. Then back in Central Florida on September 6th. Get ready for all the action because we always bring it to you here on Pro Box TV. It was a night all about the red tonight and all about the unbeaten fighters. And on July 22nd, we will bring you a Saturday presentation from Uruguay with our new partnership that continues to go. We had a boxer event here, now Samson Boxing. Gary Jonas and our leadership, we are trying to bring you fights not just that we are able to call from here right in our building, but from all around the world to truly be, Chris, your boxing channel. Yeah, I mean, we, we don't promote boxers, we promote the sport of boxing, and that's yep. that's what we do here. We, we're bringing you guys good fights, uh, fights that you want to see, exciting fights, and we're going to bring you the news, we're going to bring everything you need to know. This is this is where you need to stop if you need to know about boxing. I mean, if there was, if there was Pro Box TV when I was a kid, it would literally be my screensaver every day. Paul, I think I, I actually got the whole, whole one of your rather. talk shows a moment ago when you were talking about potential, like, opponents for Martinez. That was that was kind of fun. Yeah, he's going to I didn't say anything, but yeah. I thought I did a good job. No, he's, 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 <laughs> he's going to be the kind of guy you want to watch. Like I said, he, he, he's good enough to demand respect, but he's flawed enough to, that, to make that it he gets you excited. That he gets yeah. you excited. You know, he's, 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 he's never going to be the kind of guy who can dominate you and not get hit. He's going to always get hit, but he's going to look to destroy you as well, and, that, and those are fun guys. Well, guys, that makes me think of that is Arturo Gatti. You know, he was yeah. a flawed guy. He was a lot of fun to watch. You know, he, he, he would lose, and you'd still love him, and he actually just passed away. Rest in peace. I mean, not to just pass away, but we're celebrating the anniversary of his, his passing uh, recently. So, yeah, it's another guy. A flawed guy that was fun to watch. Fun to watch tonight as the unbeatens remained perfect here in our world headquarters. It started with the leader of the DB3, Kelvin Davis, 9-0. Six knockouts, then 22-year-old Julio Solis, followed up by Najee Lopez and Lester Martinez. For my powerful partners, Paulie Malinaji and Chris Algieri, Mike Goldberg saying so long until next time. We see you right back here on Pro Box TV.